Hey, what's up, guys? So, not a tutorial today. I'm just going to show you a little bit around my studio and show you why I have things hooked up the way that I have them hooked up and how I incorporate everything um, the way that it works for me. And I've had a few questions about this, so I thought I would share. It. It is important um, to learn how to sync all your gear up and everything, so this is how I sync up mine. I'll start with the uh, Moog. I'm going to be using this as a MIDI controller. And right now it's going MIDI out into my Behringer Neutron. And, and it's going out of my Neutron into my Korg Mini Log. So right now I'm going to hit this key and it's going to skip through these and go over there. Okay? That's the noise that we're hearing from. And the reason that I like doing that is because now I can bring in my Neutron and get a nice uh, fatter sound and before I get okay yeah let's keep going so now I can bring in my Neutron here let's turn up a little volume okay turn this thing down just a little hair and we can change the sound here. What's really cool is, and I don't know if you guys can see too well here. Let me zoom in on the screen real quick. Uh, we're going to look at the mini log. And what's dope about it is right here, the gray box. When I hit this key, can't see that and I don't want to move it because I cut it and there's some loose wires in there and stuff but it shows what my waves are through these boxes so because uh, I have them going audio in also so check this out um, now that I got that sound now I'll bring in my Moog And the reason I like doing that is because I like to make my own sounds. I'm not going to hate on anybody that's using Splice or any of the other outlets where you can get your own stuff and the royalty free and all that. And you can copyright them and you make your own songs and all that. And that's cool. But when somebody else does it, it's like, then what? You know, it's, it's, got, it's kind of got the same lead. And, you know, after you mess with that for so long, you kind of have an ear for it and you're like, oh yeah, they totally made this beat on the MPC or they totally made this beat with a stock kit on the MPC. Or if you really have a good ear, you'd be like, well, this loop came from Splice. Look, I got the same loop right here and chopped it up and just did a simple reverse because a lot of people won't take the sample anymore and chop it up, put a reverse saw to add some effects and stuff to it. They just put the same sample and loop and put drums behind it and you know, you call it your own, but, you know, deep inside, is that really yours? It's like stealing a copy of Fruity Loops and making music off of it. And it's like, you feel a lot better if you just did it the right way. That's all I'm trying to say, man. But, so, you got the sounds going in here. And what is dope is that everything's going into my mixer. Even my microphone's going into my mixer, okay? And anything coming out of my mixer goes directly into... Um, my MPC so you can actually see and change and manipulate my voice I'm going to change the audio input on my MPC and guys if you have any problems with the MPC man hit me up dude uh, there's no no reason to not be able to do what you want to do on this thing I mean in 20 minutes <laughs> That thing came out like I ain't gonna talk too loud, but yeah, it's definitely definitely going through my MPC now, and anything that goes through my MPC. So when I track out back to the splice thing, okay. When I make my own samples, I know that they're mine. I'm uh, I'm not saying anything about. I'm not hating on that. I mean, it's dope to get a, a nice loop, but man, to be able to just get here and lay down a key and 
get on your own synthesizer. I mean, even the sounds in the MPC give you give you good sounds that you can manipulate. So back to the, my setup. I got this going in through the MPC. Let me switch this over just a little bit. So you can kind of see my voice going through it. And you can add compression and all that and blah, blah, blah. So we went over all this. Well, I got that set up. And then this uh, is all going into my MPC, out of my MPC into here. So when I go to like my menu and I hit sampler, I can see my voice, which is coming in super hot. Um, I can adjust that through my MPC now and, you know, make it to where you can actually hear what's going on. So I can, any, any tracks go through there, I can track out, let me show you here, sorry, see that's the Akai Force, and that's the MPC, so you, you, you can look at that for a second and be like, okay, what can you do with that, it's like, well, I can do a lot, because I can audio track all my sounds through the MPC or I, I can actually have them come back out of here into my MPC so I don't have to transfer anything it's all live by the way that I have it all set up um, other than that man I have some other videos where I've shown where I track out my guitars let me turn back my other mic because this seems a little bit loud So, um, yeah, that was really loud. I need to put a compressor, compression on that and uh, some other stuff. But, yeah, I like to make my own samples. And I like to make my own drum kits. And, honestly, I could do without the, the effects and everything that come with the box because I have them on synthesizers. And I can make my own stuff is the only reason I, I like to have it set up this way. Uh, this keyboard over here sends a MIDI signal into my MPC for my MIDI tracks and comes out of this keyboard and then this keyboard's got all kinds of mad I don't want to drop you guys but this key this keyboard right here has got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, it's got like 30 knobs on it and you can make any noise you want with it so while the sequence is playing back I can MIDI my stuff back and change it in live time so I just think that that's the best workflow for me and the whole reason I got the MPCX was so that I could plug in you can watch my first video on YouTube and I wanted to plug all my guitars into the MPCX so I ended up getting a mixer and all that and this and that. And then I found out you can't mute your audio pads like you can your, your plug-in pads on your mixer, you know. You have to go in and delete them on different clips or different, I'm, I'm mixed up between clips and scenes. But like scene one and two and three, it's kind of, if you want your vocals to only hit on two, you got to delete them from one and three. But yeah, that... It, that's kind of messed up and right now in the 2.4 the song modes all janky right now so it's like only sequences one three five only odd sequences will work whenever you hit play after you arrange a song at least that's the problem I'm having right now and then whenever you go to like some pad perform mute things and it says oh you can't have a plug-in on this screen if you're running in controller mode and it ever says that hit it on your controller and it'll pop up on your MPC I guarantee it if, yeah. any screen that it says no this isn't available hit it on the software and it'll pop up on the MPC but uh, yeah that's really all I really wanted to get at on this um, I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos and I kind of want to make a video about that uh, next but as far as my studio setup that's it man I can plug my live guitar through my guitar effects and go straight into my mixer everything stacked on top of each other or I can single play them single and then I can track them out on the on the force and 
copy out my tracks these would be sequences on the MPC sequence 1 through 8 it's perfect for me that's 64 bars that's all I usually use anyway and uh, I just mute out different parts instead of muting I just don't paste them on parts which is really dope because while that's playing I can go back to my MPC and start another session or do whatever I want while I'm just launching different clips to buy more time if I wanted to do something live but uh, I'd like to pack all this stuff up in a van and be able to drive around town and see what the local kids and stuff could do with this kind of stuff you know and it's a uh, big part of my you know mission here is to have a studio where you know you can have reasonable prices and actually learn some some valuable information and actually get some music out there to where like a like a boys and girls club but for for um, kids with an ear man kids with musicians kids for that play but anyway guys enough rambling on I gotta go and hit up this other video because it's gonna be really 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 interesting and uh, anybody that wants to get in on it I would definitely you know check out the next one